Hi, my name is LJ Sinaya. Greetings to each one of you from this program. I would like to thank the organizers for inviting Cygnus, the World Catholic Association for Communications, to share our experience as part of uh, Pablo Freire's uh, centennial program. Um, for over 90 years, Cygnus is involved in uh, alternative communication education through cinema, radio, TV and audiovisuals in the various regions. In, in the late 70s, some regions felt the need for education to be an experimental, uh, critical process. Thus, uh, group media methodologies were introduced. So the regions uh, developed their own education approach. Uh, they called it uh, media awareness uh, programs, uh, media education, uh, edu communication, media literacy, and so on. Um, moving uh, fast forward, uh, in, in the last decade or so, uh, Cygnus began to invest uh, directly with young people uh, and young communicators through a global communications lab. Uh, program that that you know challenges young communicators to be critical uh, media users uh, as well as uh, media producers in the light of the gospel. Um, the call of louder to see is a call to love and to call to action. The creation as the center. The call is to all human beings to see what happens to our common home, to judge the causes and to act in an integral manner, of course, uh, taking sides um, of the periphery. So uh, phase two of the global program, uh, compassion and social communications, care for our common home goes deeper to ask some fundamental questions like uh, who am I and uh, what is society? So the program is designed to conscientize young people through a learning journey, uh, encountering, seeing their context, judging with an uh, interdisciplinary, interfaith orientation and preparing them to act. Uh, and to be the voice of the voiceless. So in many ways, the, the program uh, is close to Pablo Freire's uh, concept of touching. Uh, the basic approach of our program uh, is touching and feeling the periphery. So um, the following pr presentation you're about to see is about an experience of a young communicator, uh, Xavier Tabonel from uh, Cuba, uh, who attended this global fellowship program, uh, which we partnered with, uh, with Sydney's partnered with uh, Xavier University in uh, Bhuvaneswara about a year ago. So I would like to, uh, to start by uh, pointing out the, the source of inspiration of this program. Uh, that uh, we we went through in in India, uh, and it was Laudato Si, Laudato Si, the encyclical letter of uh, Pope Francis. When I think about Paulo Freire and his ideas, I think a lot about uh, the idea of the oppressed ones, the idea of those who need to be uh, helped, of those who need to be given a voice to speak. And the ideas of Laudato Si are precisely uh, that, to bring back all the values and, and, and ideas that are very lost in our current world. So the point of gathering nine young communicators from six different countries uh, in, a, in a place like uh, uh, India, it's a remarkable uh, activity. Uh, we went there to, to study in a deep way in which sense we can apply the compassionate love 
that uh, we learned from Laudato Si into the field of communication. So uh, we study very carefully uh, what can we do as communicators to uh, bring back compassion, love, and uh, ecological conversion and uh, reality uh, uh, awareness of the world we are living. So we take, we took like the Laudato Si as, uh, as an example and uh, as uh, uh, like a light to apply in our, in our program. Uh, but we were in a really good place. We were in the new humanities department of the XUV, the Savior University of Bhubaneswar. And this uh, new humanities department has a lot to do with uh, Paulo, Paulo Freire's uh, notion of education, because it invites us to consider uh, and to study other, other uh, uh, subjects that traditionally are gone, are no longer in today's university. So the fact that we could study compassion in an intellectual way, uh, the fact that we can, that, that we could uh, uh, rethink how love can be present in communication was uh, uh, one of the strongest uh, uh, points of this uh, program. Another very important thing about this department and this program was uh, that they allow us to uh, transform the programming according to our own interests and backgrounds. Uh, we were uh, from six different countries, nine different uh, people, and there was an inev inevitability of... Uh, uh, sometimes discussions and, or, or uh, problems in, in an intellectual or spiritual or political way. But it was part of the, the growing process of the, of the program. So when you planned a program like this uh, Laudato Si certificate, you need to consider that uh, there is nothing uh, predictable in the way people are going to interact. So if you gather nine uh, young communicators, not only in a classroom, but also in life, uh, the, the lives will be uh, related in many levels, uh, in many levels. And uh, I believe the, the role of compassion and compassionate love, the idea that you learn not only in, in the classroom, but also in the, in the life with others was a key to understand the, the value of compassion in communication. Uh, it makes me, makes me think in the recent messages of the Pope to communicators, he invites us uh, just as uh, Laudato Si to be involved with the reality we uh, we are trying to tell, to be part of the story we want to tell. So we were leaving uh, the the study of compassion, but we were also living compassion in in our own lives. We were living together for uh, more than the three months that the program lasts, and that meant to create a bounds of friendship, of uh, work between each other and uh, I believe it was one of the one of the greatest uh, things about this program it was not only intellectual not only communicational not even uh, only religious but also uh, uh, deeply uh, involved with each other's uh, life so uh, the transformation was inevitable. Uh, taking Laudato Si as source, leaving the compassion in uh, our own lives, uh, rethinking the way we communicated these values to, to life 
has indeed a lot to do with uh, with the notions that uh, uh, Paulo Freire uh, defended. So uh, when we go through through uh, the daily life of this program, we see what was the outcome of this uh, uh, life, this uh, process of uh, intellectual and spiritual process. We discover that. Uh, it took a particular form, and uh, this form was uh, one book, one uh, digital book that we called Unfold Nest. Uh, as you as you realize, the name itself has a lot of uh, meanings meanings within. It was uh, the the place where we. Uh, condensed all our, our backgrounds, our, our learnings, and or our, uh, our experiences in, in India. So it, it, it was a traditional book, but it had a, a, a multiform ways of expressing messages. And we thought that that book is the testimony, not only of uh, our intellectual learning, but also as uh, it's the testimony of our transformation as uh, communicators, as believers, uh, and as, of course, as uh, individual persons. So uh, the beauty of this program at the end was that the transformation that we achieved in perhaps in a, in a personal way, we had the opportunity of uh, giving it uh, back to others. We also had to uh, perform uh, personal projects and they had a lot to do with uh, our own identity as communicators. So each one in each uh, origin country uh, developed a particular project that had a lot to do with the learnings we, we got from India. So I would like to <clears throat> synthesize the, these uh, learnings. So well, what can we learn with an experience like this? In the first place, we don't, know, we don't consider this kind of experience only uh, an intellectual one. We need to realize that uh, an educational experience of this kind also involves all the, all the phases of one's life. Uh, if you uh, face all the problems that uh, you live daily with your family and friends, but uh, within the, the context of a, of a small group of communicators well, that eventually became uh, a group of friends and a network of uh, colleagues, uh, you need to have a great inspiration. We found that inspiration in many masters, in many uh, teachers, but especially in, in Pope Francis Laudato Si uh, uh, encyclical letter. Uh, we understood what was the love of compassionate love in, in the field of communications. And we had the chance to live that in an amazing culture like India. So we had the opportunity of live that culture uh, from the reason and from the senses. So uh, as you can imagine, uh, the Indian context was the, the perfect opportunity to interact with compassion and to me with many realities. Uh, you know, the Indian society is a complex, uh, it's a com very complex society. It has uh, many uh, religions and spiritual traditions living together uh, in the same street, in the same city, uh, sometimes interacting with, uh, with uh, violence or with uh, no care, but uh, it's always an enlightening experience to, to live and to learn from them. So um, the Laudato Si inspiration, the, 
uh, Gandhian, the Christian, the Islam and the Buddhist experience uh, formed uh, uh, a background, a, a very solid background for us to interact and to dialogue with these uh, realities. Even when the experience was uh, only to describe the experience can be very useful to develop programs of the same kind. Uh, it is uh, a really good place to, to uh, reflect on how these conceptions and uh, how the, the compassion is related to communication and how, how can we uh, develop uh, an intellectual or academical program that also contains uh, the spark of life and the spark of uh, spirituality. Uh, we have uh, noticed, we have learned that they have uh, a lot to do with Paulo Freire's vision for uh, critical education, for a better education that can uh, transform us into, into better uh, men and women, into better uh, students and teachers, and of course, to better citizens and persons. So thank you very much for your patience. Uh, this was uh, a great experience for us and uh, I am really grateful of your uh, patience of listening. So thank you very much for, for your attention.